On July 16, 1994, the world held its breath. Researchers around the world stared spellbound at their screens and watched the largest explosion ever recorded in our solar system. Something had smashed into Jupiter, releasing the energy of 50 million Hiroshima bombs. Be sure to stay tuned until the end to learn all about galactic explosion. And if you like it, I'll be galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment. Thanks guys and welcome. Let's start the video of the love story between Caroline and Huygen Shoemaker, who were anything but classic lovers. They didn't sit on the couch in the evening, bored watching the news or Netflix or digging around in flower beds on Sundays and sipping Prosecco afterwards. No. They organized their married life a little differently. They devoted all their time and energy to the sky. She, a renowned planetary scientist who discovered around 800 asteroids. He, a well-known geologist and planetologist who was involved in the development of the Apollo mission, among other things. So both were super successful at what they did and contributed significantly to the exploration of our solar system. One day, while the two of them were gazing at the stars at the world-famous Palomar Observatory in California, they met David Levy, who was working as an astronomer at the time and scanning the sky for comets and asteroids. At an astronomical conference in Arizona, he he gave a lecture on his work which the couple heard and invited the astronomer to the Palomar Observatory. This could have turned into a great daily soap story with love triangles, jealousy and ultimately murder and manslaughter, but as I said, these people devoted all their energy to astronomy. How boring! I'm switching back to Netflix now! I promise you guys that this story will end more exciting than any of your soaps. The couple and Mr. Levy met again at the observatory and decided to scan the sky for comets in a joint project. From then on, Levy worked together with the shoemakers and one day a really big catch fell into their net. On March 24th, 1993, the researchers noticed something unusual on their screens. After several examinations, they realized that they had captured a comet near Jupiter that had broken into 21 pieces due to the planet's extreme gravity and had gone into a very unusual orbit around the planet. The clever foxes among you are already noticing two unusual things. First, the comet does not move around the sun like other comets, but flew in an elliptical orbit around Jupiter. Jupiter is simply so heavy that it can simply pull other objects from their orbits and force them to rotate around it. In fact, many of its moons are captured asteroids that had better things to do, but are now doomed to orbit the gas giant forever. Imagine a fatso kidnapping you and forcing you to spin around his fat rolls forever. That's about it. And the second extraordinary fact is that the comet broke into pieces due to the gravitational effect of Jupiter. The strange orbit and fragmentation of a comet are very curious characteristics. For this reason alone, further documentation of the trajectory was worthwhile. But what the researchers discovered was truly unique. The comet was supposed to collide with Jupiter. You may now be saying, Oh well, then a crumb hits the clouds of a planet. I couldn't care less. That happens all the time. Yes, that's true. Even on Earth, little stones hit the ground every day. And not just a few, but lots of them. Guess how many grams or kilograms of stones from space hit the Earth every day and write your guess in the comments. The number is really fascinating, and I'm really looking forward to seeing which of you comes closest to the correct answer. But guys, don't cheat. It was just the first time that astronomers discovered a comet heading for a collision with another planet. But the impact of this comet, which the researchers named Shoemaker-Levy 9, is of particular interest to us for many reasons. And no, it's not because various directors like Michael Bay wanted to be inspired by an impact scenario for one of their next Hollywood movies. Although I have to say that Armageddon really is an excellent movie and Bruce Willis has never performed better than as an asteroid blasting drill master. Compared to that, Bob the Builder is really boring. My kids will only watch shows like Bruce the Asteroid Blaster or something. But back to our comet. After it became known what was going on with the comet, telescopes around the world and in space were pointed at Jupiter. It was a real celebrity moment for the gas giant. It had never received so much attention before. Even several space probes pointed their antennas towards Jupiter. The Galileo probe just happened to be around the corner and was able to observe the comet at close range. The Ulysses probe and Voyager 2 didn't miss the spectacle either. A bit like Britney Spears performing in public again or something, except that the effects of a concert by her would be nowhere near as drastic as those of a comet impact. Well, although, I don't know what would really be worse. 
So as I said, all eyes were staring upwards from July 16, 1994, and everyone was waiting spellbound to see what would happen. And the result was truly breathtaking. When the fragments finally hit Jupiter, there were massive explosions in the atmosphere, and massive is an understatement. There is no word that could even come close to describing these explosions. The impacts were so energetic that telescopes on Earth were able to observe them without any problems. The comet raced towards the planet at an incredible speed, at around 216,000 kilometers per hour, which is almost as fast as I run when my wife tells me to clean out the dishwasher, so the fragments really did hit the cloud layers super fast, releasing the energy of not just one Hiroshima bomb, not two, not ten, but fifty million Hiroshima bombs. An impact of a comet of this size on Earth would undoubtedly lead to the extinction of all life on our planet. Except tardigrades. Tardigrades always survive. Ah, I love tardigrades. So what we have here is the largest explosion ever observed in the solar system. Some fragments of the comet were two kilometers in size and created impact craters in the cloud cover that were as big as the Earth. Huge fireballs were created and shockwaves swept across the planet causing massive disturbances in Jupiter's atmosphere. Lightning discharges, fluctuations in air pressure, and a rise in temperatures to 30,000 degrees Celsius. Layers of dust and gas were hurled upwards by the impact forming gigantic clouds of debris that burst up to 3,000 kilometers high despite Jupiter's enormous gravitational that's the entire size of Australia. This was really surprising as the astronomers had not really expected to be able to record such after effects of the explosion. The debris clouds then crashed back down and burned up in Jupiter's atmosphere. In the case of Jupiter, these were scars in the form of large dark holes in the atmosphere that could be seen for months by our telescopes such as Hubble. This provided the researchers with valuable information about the atmospheric conditions and processes within Jupiter's atmosphere. For six days, poor Jupiter was at the mercy of this bombardment of 21 comet fragments, and the researchers were able to collect an incredible amount of data and information, especially after the impact, and thus learn more about the properties of Jupiter's atmosphere, such as the chemical composition or the temperature and density. One finding, for example, was that the clouds created by the impact contained large quantities of sulfur compounds. Specifically, hydrogen sulfide was detected in the clouds. Before the impact, the exact quantity and distribution of these substances was completely unknown. The researchers were also able to detect silicon, iron and magnesium, as well as large quantities of water, which nobody would have expected. The researchers were also able to map the distribution of water vapor and ammonia in the atmosphere. But probably the most important finding is that large objects from space can hit the planets in our system at any time. Jupiter acts like a magnet and attracts all large objects in the solar system, thus potentially protecting the Earth from impacts. Nevertheless, it is no wonder that the focus in the 1990s was on planetary defense. Shoemaker-Levy 9 was a kind of wake-up call for Hollywood, but also for NASA. In 1998, the NEO program was launched. This is an initiative that focuses on the discovery, observation, and understanding of asteroids and comets that are close to Earth. Shoemaker Levy 9 has reminded everyone of the threat of potentially dangerous comets and asteroids. With the NEO program, NASA wants to better predict which objects can really become dangerous to Earth and then take measures to prevent a collision with Earth. This is perhaps where Bruce Willis comes into play again, because his action on the asteroid is not that science fiction-like. NASA has come up with various ideas to divert a dangerous asteroid from its orbit. For example, it would be possible to hit the asteroid or comet with a probe and create an orbital deviation with the impact of the probe, which NASA has already successfully tested as part of the DART program, or you could hit the asteroid with a nuclear explosive device, which would of course be somewhat more brutal. Either way, Shoemaker Levy 9 has shaken up the research world and given us some insights into cosmic impacts and their effects on their planets. Quick reminder that every additional subscriber helps this video resonate with even more people. So if you're watching this video and haven't subscribed yet, or know any space-loving friends and family, I'd love it if you'd help me spread the word about this channel. Thanks guys! You can find out more exciting galactic stories in the videos shown, so be sure to click on them. And if you want to support my work, be sure to visit our space store. Every purchase helps to keep the channel going, otherwise I'd say see you in the next video. Take care guys!